Okay, let's see what are return tracks, what we can do with them, why we should use them, um, and how to set them up in Ableton. So uh, I have an empty, empty Ableton project here, and to the right, by default, we have two return tracks. On the first one, we have by default loaded the reverb, and on the second, the delay, probably the most used effects for return tracks. If you want to create more return track, you can simply right click and insert return, or on a Mac, Command Option T, on a PC, it's Control Alt T. And we can have up to 12 return tracks, okay? Nice. Now, as you can see, as, as we add return tracks, we also get added a dedicated send knob on each track. Uh, I'm gonna leave just that first too. So, return tracks are tracks that are only for audio effects. You cannot put anything else except audio effects, or of course, uh, plugins, audio effects. Uh, it doesn't have to be only the built-in stuff. Now, what that allows us to do is to have a dedicated track just for an effect, so it allows us to have a few advantages. So, for example, let me load the drum loop here. I'm gonna go maybe to the core library. Uh, that comes, everyone have it. It comes with Ableton, samples, loops, and we're just gonna load, let's try like a... Uh, breaks and steps. Let's see if we get something here. Let's try this one. Nice. Now I'm going to delete these two MIDI tracks because we don't have any instruments right now. And we can see that right here on the this audio track, we have a send A and send B. As much as we turn it up, it's going to send more and more volume from this track. It's going to send it over to the return track uh, to be to output from there. So essentially what's happening is we keeping our entire uh, original audio as is, and we just blending in, we're mixing in a layer of effects. Um, nice, so let's uh, see why we wanna do this. I'm gonna take this reverb and put it on uh, the, uh, the loop itself. So now it's on the track itself, it's directly on the track. Nice. And this is what we called an insert effect, where the audio goes directly into the effect, getting processed, and then outputs. Um, we can decide how much of the signal of the sound is going into the effect with the dry-wet knob. Okay, so it depends, like, let's say, 30%. So only 30% of the sound is going to go into the reverb to get processed. And 70% is going to bypass it. Okay, so we're essentially taking something out of the sound right, because we're, 30% of it is going to the reverb. But what if we want to keep the sound completely clean, solid, powerful, and we just want to add, mix, uh, kind of layer our effect on it. So that's why we use return tracks. And that's also why when you are using return tracks, uh, the signal, the sound needs to be completely wet. So that's why I'm going to put in 100% wet, because 100% dry is already in the original track, right? So we don't need more dry. So here's 100% wet, nice, and I can use the send knob to start sending more and more volume into the return track. We're going to start seeing in the return track volume, we're going to start seeing it coming up as I send it more and more. Amazing, okay, so this gives us a few advantages. First of all, uh, of course, we're keeping it clean, right? We're keeping the original track clean, we're not taking any not diffusing the sound, we're not making it in the background or anything, we're just mixing in the reverb. can decide how much I want to mix. And furthermore, I can even add more effects on my reverb that won't affect the original sound. It will only affect the reverb. So let's drop, for example, let's drop an auto pan right after the reverb. Turn up the amount. Let's take down the phase so it's kind of like gating. Let's try it now. Nice. You can also solo the reverb. Right, so now I'm only soloing the return track, the effect. Right, and here's, we can put whatever other effects we want on it. And create our own unique reverbs. For example, a very common thing to do is just to make sure you cut the lows. And sometimes you even want to cut the highs from the reverb if you want to make it more transparent. So just one example of the crazy effects you can put on a reverb uh, track, okay? Nice. Now, another advantage this allows us, it's let's say here I had another instrument like bass. Oh, right here, like bass. I can use the same reverb, or maybe not bass, that's not. Uh, let's go like keys. I can use the same reverb to send the keys to 
And by so doing so, also adding a gluing effect, a gluing value, because now both sounds uh, are being sent to the same reverb, which will uh, make them kind of uh, live in the same space. Right? So we can send as many tracks as we want to be processed by the same return track, by the same effect, in different amounts, which is great. Of course, we can solo the effect, we just listen to the effect, which is awesome. Change the overall volume, which is just more control over your effect track. And return tracks are also very common in mixers. You'll see them in analog mixers all the time. They will have dedicated return tracks. If you're using or coming from other softwares, you already have them. They might be called effects tracks or auxiliary tracks or bus tracks. But again, those are tracks only for effects. Now, the difference in processing is that if we have the effect directly on the track, that's called an insert effect. We're inserting the effect on the track. And if it's on a return track, it's called a parallel, process, parallel processing because we both have the effects that we have on the track itself, like the insert effects. And at the same time, we're also, we're also using reverb completely separately at the same exact time. So that's parallel processing. We're kind of layering effects. Um, so th these effects are extremely useful for reverb and delays, but you will see as you get more and more into mixing and mastering, there are also a lot of parallel processing for mixing like or, and sound design. Like you can put a distortion on a return track for parallel distortion. You can put an EQ for parallel EQ. And obviously one of the most classic things to do parallel is a compressor, a aka parallel compression, aka New York compression. So there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with return tracks. You don't 100% have to use them in Ableton because we also have racks, uh, audio effect racks, which allows us to do parallel processing on the track itself. But essentially, it's very similar to how this works. Now, one last advantage, um, that a cool trick that we can do with return tracks, and this comes from dub and reggae music, is momentary effects. So let me uh, go and... Uh, load the project here. Awesome. So here I have a simple beat. Let's play it. Here's the drums on the top, just in contact. Nice. Now let's say we want to do momentary effects, meaning that we only want to send uh, the snare or the kick or a vocal or uh, one note of the melody to an effect, right? And if it's a time-based effect, it's going to be a problematic to put it on the track itself for a few reasons. So if I'm going to put a reverb, let's say I want reverb just on this snare right here. Right, and I want like a huge reverb to last for over the third and fourth bar. But I will have to automate this reverb if I want it to only be on that snare. And we're facing two problems here. So first, let's automate the on-off. I'm just going to turn it on here. So first problem is, the reverb is opening up, but it won't last, it won't keep like going, it won't decay the tail. Right, because we're closing it there. And another problem is that the dry wet, we're actually losing some of the volume. It becomes a bit quieter because of this reverb. So, instead of using uh, insert effects for momentary, and again, you can use momentary effects for things that are not time-based, like filter, Obviously, you can turn it on and off on specific notes. But things that are time-based, like reverb and delay, it might be worth it to just use sends. So instead of automating the on-off of the effect, I'm going to automate the send right here. So the sends are here, look like this, like knobs in the session. And in the arrangement, they're underneath the volume of each track. We can see them. Send A, send B. If I'm going to add another return track, here's send C. Let's undo. Okay, so let's click on return track A, and now I can take my pencil with B and send just this snare as much as I want to the reverb. And what we're doing here is the drums stay full force, full power, no effects, and then uh, just on that snare, we're also adding another track just with reverb. And we can do the same with delay. We have delay on return track B. Let's adjust it to be like quarter notes, more feedback. Let's click on Send B. Let's actually open Send A on a new lane. Click on Send B. And now let's send like this snare, whatever, just to demonstrate. Oh, let's do make it syncopated, 3 16th notes. All 
Okay, it's kind of hurting the groove in this case. I won't use it, but we can definitely hear it. Uh, so momentary effects, also great on vocals. If you want one word, uh, one phrase to be with a certain effect that includes time, like reverb and delay, momentary effects are great. So return tracks are tracks that we use only for effects. You can have up to 12. For each return track, you will get a dedicated send knob. Whoa, what happened? My Ableton don't have any more space. Let me cancel some. Okay, we'll get a dedicated send knob for each one, uh, which will allow us to send multiple tracks to the same effect or make um, a temp a momentary effects while still keeping the original tracks completely dry and uh, without uh, uh, changing them in any way and just adding effects to them with the returns. Hope you find this useful. Uh, I'll catch you next time.